நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டேமல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனவுண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வெர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் த டேமல் வீடியோ இஸ் கிவன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் வீடியோ This is astrologer Deepa and I'm presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video I explained about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Sagittarius ascendant. In this video I'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Capricorn ascendant. For the native of Capricorn ascendant moon is the lord of the 7th house. When moon resides in Capricorn it means that the lord of the 7th house resides in the ascendant house itself you have to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon if the moon has good light energy while residing in Capricorn aspecting the 7th house it indicates that the 7th house is strong if the native is Capricorn ascendant and Capricorn rashi the native will be a very hard working person based on the status of saturn that is ascendant lord you have to make further predictions when ascendant lord and rashi lord are same there is no substitute at all it means that you have only one eye we all have two eyes for vision and if we lose one eye by chance we can manage with another eye but for the native whose ascendant lord and rashi lord are same it means that the person has only one eye for the vision for such native that is whose ascendant lord and rashi lord are same we have to make predictions very keenly what do you have to check in the natal chart since the ascendant lord and rashi lord are the same that particular planet that is ascendant lord should not be weak in the natal chart what will happen if the ascendant lord is weak there is no substitute to compensate for this for the native of capricorn ascendant and capricorn rashi saturn has to be subhatva or with sukshma strength if saturn attained subhatva and sukshma strength it is considered to be auspicious When moon resides in Capricorn it aspects the 7th house the 7th house lord aspects its own house cancer and strengthens the 7th house cancer in general the 7th house lord should not reside in the house of a natural malefic like saturn however when moon resides in Capricorn with good light energy and strengthens the 7th house the native will get benefits through friends spouse business partner etc 
Here the ascendant lord and Rashi lord or same, so it should be strong. That is what all you have to identify. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the second house, that is Aquarius, for the native of Capricorn ascendant. Here the seventh house lord is in the second house. The native will benefit post marriage. You can find out whether the native is going to live a good life post marriage or whether he is not going to live a good life post marriage. The lord of the seventh house that is house of marriage is in the second house which is the house of family. You can check whether the native can have a good life after creating his family. In addition to this, you also have to check the Dasha and Bukti, that is major planetary period and minor planetary period. Here too, Saturn will have a dominant role. What is the reason? Can you guess what the reason is? Because here, Saturn is the lord of the house of Aquarius. Though native is Capricorn Ascendant and Aquarius Rashi, Lord of Ascendant and Rashi becomes the same planet Saturn. Therefore, Saturn plays a very important role even in the case that is when native is Capricorn Ascendant and Aquarius Rashi. Here the moon will reflect the complete nature of Saturn. Here too the Ascendant Lord is Saturn and Rashi Lord is also Saturn. The native will do everything slowly and patiently. The native will do every action very slowly. What is the difference between Capricorn Ascendant Capricorn Rashi and Capricorn Ascendant Aquarius Rashi? When native is Capricorn Ascendant and Capricorn Rashi, it is a movable sign that is Chara Rashi. Therefore, native will be a bit active. When the native is Capricorn Ascendant and Aquarius Rashi, it is like 50-50%. What is this 50%? The native is Capricorn Ascendant, which is a movable sign, and Aquarius Rashi, which is a fixed sign. The Ascendant is a movable sign and Rashi is a fixed sign. So this will contribute 50% that can help to decide the nature of the native. You have to also check the very basic nature of the planets. When the native is Capricorn Ascendant and Aquarius Rashi, we can make two sort of predictions. The seventh house Lord is in the second house. The native will live a good life or a bad life post marriage. Definitely there will be a change in the life of the native post marriage. When a connection between 2nd and 7th house is established, there will be a change in the life of the native post-marriage. When moon resides in Aquarius, it should not be definitely Amavasya or it should not be a waning moon heading closely towards Amavasya. In case if the moon is Amavasya, it should definitely get connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus. If the seventh house is strong, then the native, after setting up his own family, will definitely lead a good life. Please try to understand the light energy of the moon and if it is Amavasya, definitely it should get the connection of natural benefits. If it is Amavasya, and the moon is connected with Jupiter, it is not considered to be Amavasya at all. When sun and moon are in conjunction and in addition to this, if it has got the connection of Venus, then the moon should not be considered as Amavasya while making prediction. There is another possibility that when either the sun or the moon has got Sthanabala, Though it is Amavasya, it can be ruled out. When sun or moon has its own house status or exalted during Amavasya, then Amavasya dosha can be ruled out. There are only four situations where the sun and moon can have Sthanabala, that is they can reside in their own house or exalted during Amavasya. 
the four occasions are during the month of Chittire Amavasya, that is Chaitra, mid-April to mid-May, where sun gets exalted in Aries. The second occasion is during the month of Vaikasi Amavasya, that is Vaisaka, mid-May to mid-June, when moon gets exalted in Taurus. And the third occasion is during the month of Adi, that is Ashada, mid-July to mid-August, where moon resides in its own house Cancer. The fourth occasion is during the month of Avani Amavasya, that is Shravana Amavasya, mid-August to mid-September, where sun resides in its own house Leo. These are the four Amavasya where either of the luminous planet, that is sun or the moon, will be exalted or will be in their own house. The Amavasya dosha will be less definitely during the above four mentioned Amavasya occasions. You have to definitely check whether it is Pabatva. If the person is born during uh, other Amavasya, then the moon should definitely get the connection of a natural benefic such as Venus or Jupiter. This is one of the subtleties of the astrological concepts. So please never miss to check these combinations if it is Amavasya in the natal chart. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the third house which is Pisces. When moon resides in the third house, it resides in the house of Jupiter, a natural benefic. It is considered to be very auspicious when moon resides in the house of Jupiter. When moon resides in the third house, in the house of Jupiter, as per Bhavad Bhavam, it will be in the ninth house to its own house Cancer. This planetary position will definitely give benefits to the native through the spouse, friends and business partners. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the fourth house which is Aries. When moon resides in the fourth house to the ascendant house, it attains Digbala that is directional strength. When the seventh house lord gains directional strength, it will definitely deliver a good wife, good life etc. to the native of Capricorn ascendant. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the fifth house that is Taurus. Moon gets exalted in the house of Taurus. The lord of the seventh house which is the quadrant house gets exalted in the trine house that is the fifth house. Being lord of the seventh house the moon gets exalted in the fifth house. When lord of the seventh house gets exalted in the fifth house it will act in a dual way. I often reiterate a point that the Lord of the Quadrant House should not reside in the Trine House. An exceptional case is that though the Moon is Lord of a Quadrant House, when it gets exalted in the Fifth House, it is very auspicious. In general, if you observe the native of Capricorn Ascendant and Taurus Rashi, both mother and wife will be of good status. This is a very important point to note. What is the reason? The natural significator of the mother, which is the moon, and the seventh house lord, which indicates the spouse, gets exalted. Therefore, both wife and mother will be of good status. In the natal chart of the native of Capricorn Ascendant and Taurus Rashi, if the 7th house and 4th house are not spoiled, then it will offer a mother who has great longevity of life. The mother will live to be more than 80 years of age. The mother will even live more than definitely 85 years of age. The mother will definitely have a great longevity. And this native will get a good wife who nods the head always, yes, yes, to the native whatever he says. Even though the native argues and fights with his wife, if there is a fight between husband and wife, the wife will be anxious waiting for the husband and will be concerned about the husband. 
the wife will be definitely concerned whether the husband has eaten, taken his lunch or not, etc. The wife will be restless if the husband does not pick up the phone. This sort of great wife will be delivered to the native of Capricorn ascendant if the 7th house and 4th house are not spoiled. Indeed, the native of Capricorn ascendant is a fortunate person if the 7th house lord gets exalted. It will be more auspicious if the moon is waxing or heading very closely towards Purnima. If it is Purnima and it has the connection of natural benefits like Jupiter or Venus, it will give a good wife who is Pativrita indeed. Even if she gives birth to 10 children, the love for the husband will not be reduced by even a drop. This will definitely give such an affectionate wife. I am sharing all these important points having seen thousands of natal charts. If the 7th house lord gets exalted for the native of Capricorn ascendant, this will definitely happen. That is all these positive effects will definitely happen. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 6th house. The moon should not be in the 6th house to the ascendant house. The 7th house lord should not be in the 12th house to its own house cancer. It resides in the house of Virgo and based on the strength of the Mercury, you have to make the prediction. The moon should not reside as Amavasya when it resides in the 6th house. The moon should not reside here without light energy. Definitely the moon should not have a connection with any malefic such as Saturn or Rahu. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 7th house which is its own house Cancer. When the moon has its own house status, it is better to be a waxing moon. The native will suffer only 25% Kendra Adipati Dosha here. So please don't give importance to Kendra Adipati Dosha when moon resides in the 7th house to the native of Capricorn ascendant. The moon will deliver only a very little dosha to the native of Capricorn ascendant. If only moon gets extreme subhatva, then the native will suffer from Kendra Adipati dosha. Well, let me put forward a question. What will this Kendra Adipati dosha deliver? Kendra Adipati dosha will prevent the native from getting married. It will not deliver any worse effects. When moon resides in its own house, in the seventh house to the ascendant, if it is waxing moon and when it has got the connection of Jupiter or Venus, it will deliver benefits through the spouse, friends, business partners, etc. This will definitely be delivered to the native of Capricorn ascendant and Capricorn Rashi. There is another benefit when moon resides in the 7th house. It will aspect the ascendant house. Therefore, when moon has light energy, aspecting the ascendant house, it is considered to be very, very auspicious. Now, let me explain the effects of the moon in the 8th house, which is Leo. This is the house of sun. The 7th house lord should not be in the 8th house to the ascendant house. When moon is highly subhatva while it is residing in the 8th house, it will not deliver very bad effects. The antidote is the connection of Jupiter or Venus. Let us imagine that Jupiter aspects the house of Leo from Sagittarius. Then definitely moon will not deliver very bad effects. However, when the lord of the 7th house resides in the 8th house, what will happen? It will deliver delayed marriage. It will not give a persistent life post-marriage. Though as per Bhavad Bhavam and based on house effects, when the 7th house lord resides in the 8th house is not considered to be good, when the 8th house becomes Subhatva, then it will deliver a good life post-marriage even if it is delayed. It's a very important point. I have reiterated a point many times that for the native of Capricorn ascendant, the major planetary period of the luminous planets, sun and the moon 
will not deliver great benefits. If only moon is Subhatva, then it can deliver benefits. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the ninth house which is Virgo. This position is considered to be a good one. When Lord of the seventh house resides in the ninth house, it is considered to be good. The points that I explained for the planetary position of the seventh house Lord in the second house applies here too. It will deliver a good life post marriage. This will deliver benefits through mother-in-law or from the family of the spouse. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 10th house which is Libra. Though the moon gets Nishbala in the 10th house, as per Bhavad Bhavam, a moon will be in the quadrant house to its own house. Therefore, this will deliver certain benefits to the native. It also resides in the house of Venus and therefore it will deliver benefits. Now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 11th house. In Scorpio, in the 11th house, moon gets debilitated. Please try to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon. Moon gets debilitated in the 11th house for the native of Capricorn ascendant. When moon is Subhatva here, it will deliver benefits. It loses its Tanabala in the house of Scorpio. When the 7th house Lord loses its Tanabala in the 11th house, it will reduce delivering the 7th house effects. Subhatva is the only antidote for this shortcoming. Definitely, this must not be in connection with Saturn or Rahu. When moon has got a malafic connection, it means that both mother and wife are not of good status. Whatever benefits are explained for the moon being exalted will be in the reverse or upside down when it gets debilitated. When moon gains Thanabala by exaltation in Taurus, I mentioned that both wife and mother will be of very good status. When moon loses its Thanabala, both wife and mother will be affected. When moon gets debilitated and loses its Thanabala, and in addition to this, if it is in connection with natural malafic such as Saturn or Rahu, then both the significance and the seventh house effects will be spoiled. Now, let me explain the effects of the moon in the house of Sagittarius, which is the twelfth house. This is not considered to be good when 7th house Lord is in 12th house to the Ascendant. However, there is one relief. Moon here resides in the house of a natural benefic which is Jupiter. The position of the moon in the 12th house in comparison to the 11th house is perceived as a better one. But in the 12th house, it has to be definitely Subhatva. In my next video, I'm going to explain the effects of the moon in 12 different houses for the native of Aquarius Ascendant. Well, this is question time. For the native of Capricorn Ascendant, when moon gets exalted, what are the benefits delivered by the moon? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video, which is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. Many people ask the Tamil version of every English video. Please check it in the description box for every video. We are giving the Tamil version of the video as well. Write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.